G'day everyone, Connor McDonald here. I'm in the kitchen today because it serves as a metaphor for the evolution of a database technology. What I mean by that is, I want to talk about some of the great successes with database technology, but also some of the pitfalls that it's led to and how we can perhaps avoid them and avoid those mistakes. For many people, a relational database is the only database technology they've ever encountered or worked with. And that's a cool thing because relational databases make it very easy for developers to get started. It literally is, create a table and you're off and running. You can start storing data in it straight away. It reminds me of the phrase, the kitchen sink, because if the only database you have at your organization is a relational one, you tend to store everything and everything in that relational database. But like anything, if you take that to extremes, you can end up with hundreds, thousands, even tens of thousands of tables in a relational database and managing the quality and accuracy of the data in all those tables can become hard. A policy of anything and everything that's related to data simply gets dumped into a table inside a relational database can create problems. If there's no understanding of the interdependencies and relationships between the items of data, you end up with a giant mess. And alongside that, there are plenty of dangers of trying to access and retrieve that data in a meaningful way. People have solved this for many years by using data modeling, by adding rigor to the definition of the data entities they use in their organizational applications, they avoid the inaccuracies and problems associated with a big kitchen sink of data. Forks go there, spoons go here, and we've added a bit of order to the chaos. Many businesses have been extremely successful with this approach using a relational database backed up by a rigorous data model that underpins all the data in their organizations. And for many applications, this is the perfect approach to take. Some of these systems have a very rigorous definition, and that definition is, for example, cast in law, such as government legislation, things like supply management or tax or accounting systems. Those definitions don't change that frequently, so adding plenty of rigor to really cast iron and define those applications is the perfect way forward. A very formal approach is sometimes the best approach. But for some applications, that level of rigor is perhaps overkill. I don't bring out the fine cutlery for every meal I prepare. Some applications are just prototyping examples. Other applications, the data requirements are not actually known until the application is underway and being rolled out in testing phases. We fine tune the data requirements as the application is being written and even deployed. Going down that path of extreme rigor in data modeling may actually rob a developer and hence his company of a innovation edge and competitive advantage over others. If I come up with something new I need to store in my kitchen, I don't want to have to wait until the entire kitchen is remodeled to make that new object fit. A common knee-jerk reaction is, let's go buy different technologies and different platforms, each one exactly fit for purpose. That sounds attractive at first glance, especially when I'm sitting here using the kitchen as a metaphor. But let's add some reality to that metaphor. If I'm talking about different platforms, each with different operational requirements, different APIs for access, the reality is there's a multitude of challenges with that. Now I get the spoons from here and the forks are somewhere totally different with a different API to access them as well. And don't get me started on who decided to use this particular platform on where to store the bowls. Disparate technologies can create more challenges and problems than we were trying to solve in the first place, namely avoiding the chaos of the kitchen sink and getting stuck in the quagmire of excessive data modeling and rigor. Integration in particular for these disparate technologies can often be an almost insurmountable problem. What we want is a common platform if possible that still offers us all the flexibility of those disparate storage needs should they be required in an organization. I want to be able to store my spoons and forks in drawers as before, but I still want to be able to store my bowls using a similar API, also in drawers. And even if I've got things I don't really understand or have explored fully yet, I want to be able to store them as well using a common API and common technology platform. And that is exactly where the Oracle database is evolving to. I still have the relational database features we've come to know and love for those systems that require that tight relational rigor. If I branch into linkage and relationship style data, I've got the graph component of the database platform to handle that. If I've got geographic data, I've got the spatial component of the platform to let me handle that. If I've got totally flexible needs, arbitrary data structures, I've got JSON handling built right into the database platform. 
I've got all the different database storage components I need all under a common technology platform. That flexibility lets me be arbitrary in the choice of how I build my applications, whether I'm using microservices, serverless, continuous integration models, all those things can sit quite happily on top of a common database platform because it's flexible enough to handle all the different requirements of those models. So the Oracle database platform is no longer about just relational database. It has evolved to meet the needs of what we call polyglot persistence, which in simple terms means the right data storage architecture for the right purpose. The flexibility of having all those options but still under a common technology platform, the Oracle database, means in no time you'll be serving up beautiful meals from your application development kitchen. Bye for now.